over dreary ways. Anywhere with Jesus is a house of praise. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. I'm glad you guys are way ahead of this because I didn't even mention that just follow along in your books. We're, we're not singing as a congregation, but uh, sing in your hearts, right? And so I'm going to sing on the last verse here. And so anywhere with Jesus, I can go to sleep. Just don't go to sleep here tonight, okay? Okay, but it's nice to have that security, right? To know that he's right there with us and he's watching over us. So I'm going to sing on the fourth verse. Anywhere with Jesus I can go to sleep When the darkening shadows round about me creep Knowing I shall wake and never more to roam Anywhere with Jesus will be home sweet home Anywhere, anywhere Brother Albert, could you open our service in prayer tonight, please? Let's turn to number 431, 431. And I trust that you can say that you love to tell the story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. So I'll sing the first and the last verses. by his love just imagine that he could love the unlovely 
We, even when we were enemies, he still loved us. And so praise the Lord for Jesus' love. Well, let's have a look at our announcements. And so trust that uh, you've been praying about our services coming up on Sunday. And of course, we're speaking of our regularly scheduled services, uh, morning service at 11 a.m. and evening service at 6 p.m. So uh, keep that in mind and trust that you'll be able to join us as we come together and we can uh, just uh, worship together, right? And so that's on, that's coming up this Sunday. And of course, uh, we won't, uh, we won't keep going through all these precautions, but if you have a bulletin, you'll notice that we've, we've outlined the precautions that we're taking here uh, in regards to the coronavirus and some of the specifics that we're following just due to the fact that we're in the orange phase right now in this region. And so just uh, check those out and please abide by them best you can. And so we want to we wanna do what's right. And so do our part to help out, right? Okay, I don't think we have any other announcements. And so let's turn to number 398. And you can follow along. 398, follow on. And so sing the first and last verses. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go. Where the flowers are blooming and the sweet waters flow. Everywhere he leads me I would follow, follow on. Walking in his footsteps till the crown be won. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus anywhere. I do thank you for your cooperation during this time. We would like to see us return to the yellow zone as soon as possible. And so be praying to that end, because we do not want this to uh, drag out into the Christmas season. But uh, even if it does, we will celebrate Christmas anyway, amen, in the sense that we will celebrate the birth of Christ, and uh, we can do that together, we can do that even if we can't be visiting one another, uh, it doesn't change the fact that Jesus came into this world to save those who were lost, which of course includes us. Psalm number 119 is where I would like for you to turn tonight. Psalm number 119, verse 49. And uh, Pastor Pooley, can you turn the fan setting down on this one so it's a little lower, please? I thank you for that. Uh, I meant to turn it down just before service, but... Uh, 
verse 49, it says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. We have the psalmist here of Psalm 119. This is one of this is the longest psalm in the book of Psalms. And it is, uh, it's actually quite a study when you study through each and every uh, section of that. Thank you, Pastor Pooley. Yeah, as you study each and every section of Psalm 119, it's an exciting study to go through. But uh, here in verse 49, we have the psalmist who um, basically prays as he says there, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. I've titled tonight's sermon, uh, uh, Comfort in the Word of God, or I should say, The Power of Comfort in the Word of God. And that's what the psalmist is pointing out here in the times of trials and difficulties that the psalmist has gone through and the challenges that he has faced, he still found comfort in God's Word, amen? Amen. And not that the Word of God, uh, how do you say this? There's power in God's Word, no question. But it's not by reading God's Word over and over again in the hopes that somehow that repetition is going to uh, do something that is uh, miraculous or something like that. But just in the, the Word that's given to us here, the Word throughout all of scriptures, as you read through the word of God, and you see God's challenges to us, you see his commandments, and you see God's promises to us, that can be and should be an incredible comfort to us. And you'll see this uh, in a number of places throughout the scriptures, this idea of finding comfort in the word of God doesn't matter where we're at or who we're with or, or if we're all by ourselves. We can, that's the one place that we can still find comfort, and that's in the Word of God. Because as you read and as you study through the Word of God, God speaks to our heart. Amen? And that's, uh, you know, that is uh, the power of the Word of God. But let's just take a look at a few things here as we consider this passage in, in the Word of God, throughout the Word of God, we find both hope and comfort in darkness. And the psalmist alludes to that in this particular passage. It is, at, uh, it is through one, Psalm 119 that uh, we see the psalmist revealing that he, he has faced some challenges. He says, this is my comfort in verse 50, in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. I've got uh, five things for you here quickly tonight as we look at this passage. And the first one is we find comfort in the Word of God because the Word of God quickens us, or the Word of God gives us life. It gives us life, and therefore it gives us hope. Gives us, uh, gives us life through knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen? seeing that Jesus came, died for our sins, and it's through Jesus Christ that we have eternal life. And that Je through Jesus Christ, as uh, Paul says in Ephesians, we are made alive. And that, of course, is accomplished through the Word of God. Without the Word of God, where would we be today? Without the Word of God, how would we know about Jesus Christ and Him crucified? And so, as you can see in the Word of God, as he says here, this is my comfort. This word, God's word, is his comfort. And in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me, has given the psalmist life. And it's the word of God that gives us life. Quickens our spirit in our afflictions. As the psalmist uh, makes mention here, the, the challenges that we face, the things that we might be going through, you know, the, the Word of God brings life for us. It's amazing how many times we may, as we struggle through a situation or circumstance, that we might turn away from the Word of God, or we might uh, lessen our dependence on the Word of God. I've seen that happen a number of times when 
individuals have uh, been through a real struggle, instead of turning to the Word of God and depending upon it, they've kind of turned away. And yet it's in the Word of God that God's going to give us, give us, as he says here, and give us life, or life and a, a, a makes us alive. He quickens our spirit. Number two, we see in verse 51, as he says here, the proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. What the psalmist is speaking to here is those that scoffed at him. Those that, uh, as he says there, they, they had me greatly in derision. That's the idea of being scoffed at and mocked and... You know, as, as believers, that's something that we do face sometimes, is being scoffed at or mocked because of our belief in God or our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ or in our faithfulness to God. You know, I've had that happen where individuals, uh, you know, someone has said to me, uh, oh, you're one of those that uh, goes to church all the time, right? Right? And there's kind of a, a, you know, a, an attitude of scoffing you for, for being so faithful to something. And yet there's no greater thing to be faithful to than God and his word. Amen? And even when we are scoffed at or even when we are made fun of, we're even persecuted because of our belief in God as we work our way through the word of God. You know what we discover? There were others that faced the same thing. You know, you can't help but think of, well, Jesus Christ, of course, himself first and foremost. All the things that Jesus did, all the miracles that he performed, the words that he preached, and the messages that he brought to the people, which they were amazed at, considering they viewed him as that carpenter's son, and yet, as you come, as Jesus came, came to the end of his life and, and various times throughout his ministry, they mocked and they scoffed him. And they clearly mocked and scoffed him. And yet, Jesus still went to that cross, didn't he? And he did not waver from doing what God had called him to do. We know that uh, the apostles were scoffed at. and The apostle Paul and Peter, there was times when they were scoffed at and derided. And you read about these individuals, and you read about some of the Old Testament saints and how they had to go through similar situations, and yet they stayed faithful to God, and they stayed faithful to God's Word. And that can give us comfort, because we can see how God blessed them in His Word. And so we do not worry about scoffers. We do not fear them. Because God's word still comforts, it, comforts us and encourages us through those times. Verse 51, he says, The proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I remembered thy judgments, he says, of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. You know, the psalmist here has gone back in his mind to the things that God had revealed to him and the, and the things that uh, he knew about God and, and the judgments that uh, had been passed down onto the psalmist here of, of how God uh, dealt with ungodly people. And that brought this comfort to the psalmist. Number three, in verse 53, he says, Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Those wicked, ungodly individuals, the psalmist says, that he, the, the word of God gave him comfort when he was gripped with fear. Fear of what those that were seeking after him might do to him. How many times have we been gripped with fear in our lives? Those situations that have come up, and of course, um, we're not going to name them tonight, but stop and think about different times in which fear had settled into our hearts because of a circumstance or situation. Look, for some people, just the last uh, six months has brought tremendous fear to them, both unbelievers and believers at times. 
the fear of the unknown, the fear of what's happening and what's going to come out of this, the fear of, you know, might I uh, contract this uh, virus and be impacted by it? You know, fear is a real thing. And yet even when we are gripped with fear of the unknown or gripped with fear of what's happening around us, guess what? The psalmist says the word of God comforted him and helped him through that. There are lots of books and resources out there that we could read about on how to deal with fear, but you know, the greatest resource we have is the Word of God because it can give us direction on how to deal with fear. It, can, it shows us how individuals in the past dealt with fear and through it all that God delivered them. I think of the nation of Israel with nowhere to go. How Moses, when they, just before they crossed the Red Sea, they cried out to Moses and said, you brought us here to die. Egypt is bearing down upon them from one direction. They're down in the valley up against the Red Sea with nowhere to go. It was a, a, a losing situation. This, this was no place to turn. And you can imagine they must have been gripped by fear. And I wonder how Moses felt at that moment. Because you have one man, Moses, who's standing before this people. Well, I guess you could say Aaron as well. Standing before this people. They're crying out for their lives. And Moses continued to operate by faith. But I do wonder if Moses had some kind of fear there. And yet Moses still continued to trust in God. And he told the people, watch and God will deliver us. And you know what? God delivered them, didn't he? So we can look back and we can see these examples in the Word of God, how these situations where you know these individuals were probably gripped by fear, and yet God delivered them and provided for them in amazing ways. And so once again, as we come to the Word of God, and that's just one example of many, we come to the Word of God, we recognize that the power of the Word of God is to give us comfort when we're gripped with fear and we don't know where to turn. Number four, we find in verse 54 when he says, Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. When do we usually sing most times? Usually when we're kind of happy, kind of feeling good about things, or, you know, things are kind of going well, right? You notice when uh, we're perhaps, uh, you know, in a situation we're struggling, we usually don't often think about singing, do we? But he says, uh, but he says here, thy statutes, thy, the commandments, the word of God is what he's speaking about. He says, they have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. In other words, what he's saying is the word of God gave him the comfort and strength that he needed through his day-to-day -day challenges. The day-to-day -day challenges that uh, the psalmist faced. And we all have them, don't we? Sometimes they're big challenges, sometimes they're little, but every day can be a challenge for us. And yet... Each and every day through those challenges, we can find that same hope and comfort that the psalmist speaks about from God's word. And then number five, as you look at uh, verse 55, he says, I remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night and have kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. And what the psalmist is alluding to here when he says, I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night. He recognized that God's word gave him comfort in his darkest moments. Isn't it funny how uh, when we lay our heads down at night, that can be one of the most challenging times for us. Maybe it's because we have, at that point, we don't have distractions of the day. You know, it's throughout the day, you can, uh, even when you have something on your mind and you're worried about something, and uh, yet you have 
many different things to distract you and to keep you busy. But at night, you know, you've, you've, you, you now, uh, there's no distractions. And so, therefore, your mind kind of goes to that switch, situation and it dwells upon that situation. It's a picture of, you know, facing our darkest moments. There's nowhere to turn or go with our thoughts. And yet, the Word of God can bring comfort during that time. The psalmist says he finds comfort in the statutes of God and the Word of God during those times. You know, what helps me when I've had those times, especially if I've woken up through the night and can't go back to sleep, start thinking about the Word of God. Start reciting verses that I've memorized in the past. It's a, and it's amazing. And not only that, of course, but praying as well. And isn't it amazing how quick we fall back to sleep when we start doing that? And I've, I've been there, and I've tried to really focus on, you know, praying through certain things and, or, uh, you know, trying to recite a verse or think about different verses. And next thing you know, that worry is gone, and, you know, you're, you're out cold. He says that, the word of God here, he says, I've remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and I have kept thy law. Just by focusing on God's word, the psalmist says that he gave him comfort in his darkest moments. The word of God is so powerful, isn't it? And I mean, this is just one aspect of many that we see the power of God's word working in our lives. One small area, but yet such an important area. Open comfort. We need that, don't we? Especially in the days that we're facing, is we need that hope and comfort to keep our eyes on the Lord, to keep us looking ahead. And the place that the, the one place we know that we can find that is guess what? Just like the psalmist says here. You find it in God's word. He says, Remember the word in verse 49 unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. The psalmist just kept going back to God's word. And God's word just gave him exactly what he needed to help him face each day and face the challenges ahead. Father, we thank you for our time tonight. And Father, we are grateful for your word because your word doesn't change. And we can trust in your word because it is from you. And so, Lord, we thank you. For that, we thank you that we even have it in our own language so that, Father, we can memorize it and we can recall it. And, Lord, your word can have that comforting impact upon our lives when we need it most and to give us hope when we need it most. And so, Father, we pray that we'll just keep, especially in those times that are most challenging to us, help us to turn to your word day by day and each and every time, so that we can have this hope and comfort that comes from it, just as we see the psalmist proclaimed here. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. All right. Well, let's, uh, Blake, I believe, has some uh, prayer requests back there. I had a chance to talk with uh, Mona, and so continue to pray for her. She's uh, feeling...